Do you like movies and games also? Listen so much more, they all know. Vice, Pyro, Lotus and Friends. Welcome to Corrective Consciousness. Welcome to Corrective Consciousness episode 145, the podcast where we explore the inanity of pop culture. Ooh, so sexy. I am, I am your deliberate host, Vice <laughs> the Bold, and this is... Lotus Prince. Pyro Jack Frost. Oh boy. We should, we should uh, do an episode where we all just talk in sexy voices the whole time. Vice, we Pyro, Lotus, and blank. <laughs> In, 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 we should talk in smooth baritone. I thought I already did. <laughs> what's, what's the problem here? And we should we should end all of our sentences with ladies. <laughs> ladies. How are you old and real fast? How are you doing out there, so, ladies? So how are you, uh, Vice, uh, ladies? <laughs> so as you may guess by the smooth way we're talking, this is a fan centered episode what ladies <laughs> ladies <laughs> and then all of our fans unsubscribed <laughs> uh so um this is a follow-up since last what, week 100 um, fans on the wall 100 fans. <laughs> yeah, right. um we we ran uh pretty late with our with our wrestlemania coverage and w- with with good reason i mean there was this was a big wrestlemania like bigger than usual uh, so we were glad to have Old Man Stompy's, uh, you know, input on all of it. But um, now uh, it's time for us to give back and also, uh, you know, react to everything you guys um, have, have been posting. Because you've been very active in the last two weeks, and I really have to thank you. Uh, so we, we, we want to give you your, your, your fair shake in, t- in timing here. And I also just want to hear Lotus Prince read a lot. Mm-hmm. So, um... <laughs> <laughs> Today's your lucky day. Go. Cool. <laughs> so all you Lotus fans out there, ladies, get your ears ready. Sybil Sushler. Sybil Sushler. Oh, sh- sh- um, <laughs> what? That's what you say when you're like, you know, like trying to like clear your 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 uh, your your mouth of oh. you know like you you. you uh, I was thinking just like verbal exercises. Like I was thinking, yeah, I was thinking exa- it. exactly. He thrust his fists against the post and still insists ex- he sees ex- the ghosts. Yeah, ex- mm. that's exactly right. You know, if you're if you're if you're stammering like I am, yeah. um, or or whatever, if you're if you're, uh, your your words aren't coming to you, Peter, or pickle, you're pickle, tripping pickle, over pickle, your pickle, words. Pickle, 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 pickle. Ah, exactly. I'm, I'm sometimes pretty good at that. <laughs> Could have fooled but, uh, me. <laughs> Oof. I lost it at the end. I almost had it. And uh, we'll see you on Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, that was. Thank you, fans. I hope you're uh, satisfied with my reading of your comments. All right, so um, no, that the... that costs extra. If you want to, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it costs extra. All right, so the first comment we have is from that'll that'll be one more ring of that belt. <laughs> the first comment we have is from Baka Sensei, who actually left a few, but I'm going to read these in order of appearance. So uh, Baka Sensei said. Regarding the From Software series of Dark Souls and stuff like that, this was concerning easy difficulty in video games. Bakasensei says, I understand that feeling of ownership of the skills of a game as a Monster Hunter fanatic. Uh, I felt the latest game, Monster Hunter World, was downgrading the experience of the hunt for all changes in gameplay, easy to get items, changing on site, etc. Those quality of life improvements, but then I noticed the more people got hooked up and started to get involved with older titles and Monster Hunter X. So it was strange and great. Yeah, not to, not to mention the fact that um, the Monster Hunter World series, uh, uh, Monster Hunter World I think is Capcom's number one selling game of all time at oh, this point. Oh, that's incredible. Um, it, it, it outsold <laughs> um, Resident Evil 5, which was its previous nice. um, number one selling game, and that's that's saying a lot that's saying you know it, it, it beat out all the s- versions of street fighter that have been popular all yeah. this time you know yeah. well, well then again then again though street fighter wasn't quite a worldwide phenomenon like america and japan loved it a lot but it wasn't very like various other countries like i think like so south american countries were more into king of fighters than street fighter so like street fighter was ubiquitous in america but not necessarily worldwide that's fair i was gonna say i wasn't here when you were talking about this but like i've always 
I, I've never been a person who's really big on, hey, I beat this game, you have to be as good as I am <laughs> to hit this level, but I feel like what a lot of people don't realize by making a game more accessible to more people, it makes more, it has, it allows more people to buy the game you're interested in. Absolutely. So the creator will make more of them. So there, yeah. there's like, there are mm -hmm. pros and cons. I know, I, I kind of know why people are in the mindset of they want it to stay challenging, but me having fun with a game, playing it on easy does, and beating it does not mean that you're a worse player because you beat it on hard, the same game. Kind yeah, of I 100% agree, yeah. And, and also, like Baka Sensei said, um, not only does it get more people in, interested, but like they can also go back and check out the other works. Like, oh yeah, right. they did other stuff. What's that all about? And who knows? Yep. They might be better at those harder games now that they've gotten good with the new one or something like that. So it all comes around anyway. I, I would actually say this as well, that um, you know, those hardcore titles, more of those hardcore titles can be made because it was funded by the more general titles. Well, exactly, yeah. Yeah. So, so you know, you, 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 could, you could play the harder um, niche versions that they'll come out with yeah. for, like, the diehard fans, yeah, you know, yeah. or, or, or maybe even added content for the diehard fans, you know? Mm -hmm. And then we have another comment from the same person. Then again, there has been a lot of games before the get good mentality uh, had been there since early console ports and arcades. I specifically recall a scene when I had a Nintendo playing Double Dragon 2. A couple of my cousins were playing on easy while acting as if it was normal, and I always played on hard. And then in a level, they got stopped by the game. Yeah, remember remember that yep. era of games? <laughs> like you, you beat level 5. Play it on hard to finish the game. So, so douchey. The, the worst the worst by far is uh, Rocket Knight Adventures for um, for the Sega Genesis. That's not the worst by far. At least you get to finish the game. N no, you don't. Uh, well, you don't get the ending. Uh, yeah, you don't I mean, get the ending. Lots of games did that. I mean, Turtles yeah. Tournament Fighters did that. But, I mean, Castlevania 64 fucking cut you off like halfway through. Yeah. I think, I think that's worse a worse way. Yeah, of like it. not but, getting a certain ending is not but nearly also, as bad as getting cut off from the game itself. I kind of feel like that is just because that was during the era of arcades. Yeah. Where you want people to have to spend more money anyway. And so But it was on a lot of console ports too, like Shadows of the Empire did that. But that's also Streets of Rage three did too. Thinking uh, of the consoles yeah. is because they were probably is because they were they the games there were fewer of them and they cost a, more than the games cost now in a way. Yeah. So you would have fewer games to play so you wanted the games to last longer yeah but they didn't have the time to make the game longer like they do now with rpgs so they had to um yeah, artificially the difficulty for yeah, replay value artificially enhance the difficulty the, the yeah. amount of time it would take to beat the game mm -hmm. and similarly uh lastly just a correction to the like the like the time traveling and mind reading technology our uh, response to the second question the technology you wouldn't like okay oh yeah that's right regarding wanting to add accessibility on games for people with special needs they there are some cases where certain aspects of the gameplay are disabled like marvel spider-man uh there are the removal of puzzles to make it like more accessible but at the same time certain like aspects of the game will be lost as a result it's kind of like a like a sacrifice i guess for accessibility in in those extreme cases um and this was not mentioned in the post but there's also uh, like ports where stuff like that happens, like nine nine nine, you lose the puzzles if you're playing on iPhone or something like that, right? I mean, I, I think so, but I I want to say that it's if if someone can play the game by taking things out, like it's up to them. Yeah, they yeah, they'll let you it. know if it's a bother. Yeah, yeah, and I think it's one of those things. Granted, a developer can't make a game accessible to every single person it, the amount of time it would take and the amount of things they have to keep in mind would just be i think too much yeah but the more accessible you make it i think the better off and then probably yeah like again this goes back to uh you play it the way you want to play it and you have that self-satisfaction for how you played it but if someone else needs to remove puzzles or play it on easy or whatever it is to beat it then you should still be happy that they are playing and beating the game that you also enjoy. Yeah, it, you it, play your it, way. Let's put play it this way. way. It's, it I should agree. be the journey that matters, not yeah. the end. Everyone should be able to see the end. Just like how like, I, I'm not going to be picking up a book and be like, oh, this is too difficult. I can't finish this book. Or yeah, the same with if, a movie. If all you care about is the end, then use a, a cheat code to skip to the end credits or something. Like, whatever. Right. Yeah. And for someone to, who says to just 
watch a let's play like that's that's not the point of interactive media yeah no but the the journey should be what's important and if you're if you like having a difficult journey great but some people just want to see the end why mm -hmm. shouldn't anyway i don't want to talk about it too much yeah. but it's, well, that's it's the same way that there's three. there's yeah, different ways that you can do that whether having an easy mode having accessibility i know that there are some disabled people who have beaten games on like hard with like no special features but that's like a challenge for them and they want to yeah. do that just because that one person was able to do it doesn't mean that every person with a disability should have yeah. to go through that yeah and we, we had this talk on that particular yeah that's, that's why i don't want to talk too much to. No, I just I don't to want to repeat stuff that you Yeah, no, I just want about. to mention that like 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 we said uh, at that time, some some semi newer games have descriptions of difficulty settings when you highlight them and it says like normal mode, the game the, the way the game was designed to be played, hard mode if you like an extra challenge, easy right. mode if you just want to see the story. And it's like, well, there you go. Yep. All right, so Dracologist said, I think the way difficulty buffs uh are upset with later easy mode is the way people are upset when like a day one DLC, like like an early DLC, is given out later for free. I I, I kind of see that yeah. added in retrospect. I I kind of see that. I, mean, I, I I could see that. I could see that for a very specific group of people. Like I worked so hard and I could have done it more easily. But the right. a, a lot of the people right. that I see complaining about easy mode are doing it because like they're trying to be like gatekeepers. Like only pros get to play this That's game a good or whatever. Point, yeah. Um, Dracologist also says, speaking of time travel periods, I would like to see the original uh, Sacra Corona before it was defaced. I actually don't know what that is. It's probably some monument. Like, I don't know. It just makes me think of, like, the Sphinx with the nose or something like that. Um, Living Corpse said, speaking of spoilers, and, and no, no actual spoilers, but he says, speaking of spoilers, I remember I was spoiled for a movie and got pissed. This one guy told me I was acting like a brat and that he was spoiled for a movie and he didn't complain. But the movie he had spoiled for him was 40 years old. The movie I was spoiled for hadn't even come out yet. <laughs> that freaking sucks. I, I remember I was spoiled um, to the ending of uh, The Sixth Sense. Oh, sure. That like, was a famous a week spoiler. after it came out. That sucks, I mean, man. it kind of ruined the movie, but it was okay because then the first time I watched it, I only needed to watch the movie once. Yeah, well, you, you the do whole see time the movie differently when you know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, and, and Living Corpse also adds, uh, what time period would you like to see if you had time travel? Uh, the extinction of the dinosaurs. Just witness it. That'd be freaking crazy. Uh, Was, well, just, I just have a question. For this time travel, are you getting sent to that time or are you just watching that time? Well, the the nature of the question was you get to see it but not interact with it. So I guess you could take that as you will. <laughs> Yeah, because I was going to say, if you were going to yeah, see you would the extinction of the dinosaurs, yeah. you'd probably die a lot. Do you, yeah. do, you, do you guys know what killed the dinosaurs? Well, Chucko does. The Ice Age. Oh, I thought Chucko did. It was Chucko. Did you ever watch Justice League Unlimited? Yeah. There, did you remember the episode? <laughs> it was like a two or three parter with the villain called Kronos, who was a time traveler. Wait, there was a three-parter in Justice League Unlimited? Yeah, right. But did, did you ever <laughs> no, I never got to that one. Because there, oh, there was one uh, one of his thugs he realized had been an informant for the Justice League. And he was like, oh, really? And he just teleports him somewhere, like in the middle of a desert, and leaves. And Chuck goes like, whatever. I'll just take over this time period. I'm a badass. And he sees dinosaurs, and he's like, oh. Well, whatever. I'm still a badass. I'm a human with a brain that works. And then you see the asteroid coming in. And he's like, "Oh no!" And then like, <laughs> and then Kronos goes back to his thugs, and he's like, the remaining thugs, and he's like, "Do any of you know who killed the dinosaurs?" And they're like, "Uh, no." And he's like, "Well, Chucko does." <laughs> I'm like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> it was amazing. Uh, so Josh one eleven eight eighty eight says, "I get where the Dark Souls fans were coming from with not wanting an easy mode." Dark Souls has an online component, and getting equipment more easily can be an unfair advantage. I kind of that's a that. good point, but um, that, I mean that is a good point for that. I, I will have to say that if a game is online, it's the same why a lot of people got annoyed with Diablo Two. Like, this is a difficulty thing, but the save was local. If you played, there is a way. If you played online, the save was local, and then if you went to play, or sorry, if you played offline, the save was local. But you can move that character online, and then the save got moved to their server, and it was d deleted from your computer. But by playing offline, you can hack the save, give yourself oh. crazy stuff, and then go online with that character. That's frustrating. So there was like things they had to do to go right around that. So eventually, I think you, you could not transfer a character offline to online. You had to create it online. Oh. Um, but it's a similar thing with uh, Dark Souls, where if the game is 
that there's an easy mode. But then you could always well, just have two different servers, an easy server and a hard server. Well, that's the thing. That, that's the case with any online game. Even in fighting games, if you want to be a jerk, if you're a pro player, you could just start a new level one account and then just stomp everybody. <laughs> One I thing I want to say, like a lot of people, and again, I don't. I hope I'm not repeating something that you talked about last, like last week or whatever it was. But a lot of these people who uh, talk about how there's these reasons why you can't have an easy mode, really kind of give a disservice to game designers, thinking that they could not come up with a, re a way to make this work. That's true. Yeah, we I did agree. not bring that up. Like, sure, the creator of the Dark Souls games wants that feeling of satisfaction when you get past a challenge like that is the reason why he has not had doesn't have an easy mode which, which makes sense but by saying that oh you can't have an easy mode because this gameplay element would not work that is a poor reason because a good game designer would find a way to make it work yeah and by the way speaking of the souls games is you can only really interact with people online who are give or take like a, like around your level give or take a few levels uh, and the same goes for trading items, I think. Well, I guess you could trade whatever items you have, like, to a point. There are some items that they don't allow you to trade at all. But, like, you, you still have to operate within certain parameters. You can't just get end game stuff or boss mm -hmm. weapons or whatever necessarily just by some level 99 guy, like, when you're starting. If you're level 1 and you go online, you're going to find level 1 people. So they shouldn't have end game stuff. Because if you're New Game Plus, then you are level like a hundred something <laughs> um but to continue what um uh josh was saying sekiro you know the, the new from soft game does not have any online mechanics so there's no reason at all not to have an easy setting for a game like yep. that <laughs> yeah that game is strictly offline uh general ledger says shakespeare also invented like for words invented manager originally meaning the guy that cleaned the stables oh like manger <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, it colloquially evolved as slang for the one that has to deal with the metaphorical crap. Actually, um, that reminds me That's pretty me interesting. Of, that actually reminds me of Butler. Do you know where Butler came from? Someone who, I don't know, lures at butts. Perfect. <laughs> uh, no, it, it's someone like they, they. I didn't know I was a word. No, they, they, they use this joke in Clue. It wasn't. It was kind of a joke. Just the word sounds kind of silly. I but, buttle. Yeah, I buttle, <laughs> sir. But that's not even a joke. Uh, do you know where that comes from? No. Uh, no, was, I, I don't want to make a stupid joke again. It was it was Butler. It was like the guy who was like in like the wine cellar and stuff like that. But eventually, it evolved to taking over more aspects of the household. Oh, do wow. you know where the word robot comes from? Robot. Um, robot. I don't even know if I've heard this before. It means sure. slave in like Russia. Yeah, oh, that's slave what it was. in okay. Russia. Yep. I think I have heard of that. I didn't. I don't. Maybe I didn't know it was Russian, but that does sound familiar. But anyway, to continue what General Ledger said, as for time travel witnessing, I'd go for watching uh, the Druids of Ancient Gaul or the Rise of the Incan Empire, mainly hmm. because both cultures are shrouded in mystery and so much of what we know of them is tainted by their conquerors. That's a good point. I mean, this is a cliche expression, but it's the victors who write the history books, so who knows what you're reading? Victor who? Uh, Frankenstein. Frankenstein. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right, so, and also, it's good to hear which dietary plans you are tweaking and which are working for you, Vice. I'm glad that you have so much support. Ah, oh, thanks. Right. And uh, Baka Sensei had a couple more comments, actually. Uh, for time travel, just going to watch the Star Wars Episode Four in theaters when it premiered. That really would have been mind-blowing. Mm, that, that, that that's all, actually... A lot yeah. of technology in that movie was brand new for that movie so that would have been in like you literally never seen anything like that before also you could spoil the next movie for everybody yeah. else in the theater <laughs> no you can't they say they specifically say you can't interact <laughs> uh and also um for the extra question about villains um there was uh like like oh like oh that's right yeah for the question about like villains who converted to good or whatever uh there's dark souls your character because it's a good end or a bad end um, there's Legacy of Cain, because Cain kind of becomes less of a, just, predatory monster. And in the same game, um, oh yeah, uh, Magus, I can't believe we didn't think of this, Magus from Con Chrono Trigger. He's one of those bad guys that you beat up and he's like, oh, okay, I like yeah. you now. <laughs> and, uh, Baka Sensei also says, regarding the trailer for the Star Wars movie, like episode 9, I didn't see too many memes, but they were good. And on the spoilers part, I agree with LP. I don't like it when they spoil a good moment of the movie. 
uh, like Shazam. Because, yeah, what I was saying was in Star Wars Episode Seven, The Force Awakens, they had that clip where Han and Chewie were looking nostalgic in the Falcon. And I'm like, wouldn't that have been cool to see for the first time in the theater? And instead, you, you watch the movie in the theater, and you're like, oh, yeah, I saw this part. Mm. Um, and about the Disney streaming service, I can't wait to see how the cable companies will compete if the broadcasters change more in the future. I just hope that it doesn't really catch up on the games industry with like Stadia or Game Pass. It really feels bad to lose more rights on the media we consume. Also, this show is a trip on nostalgia with serial mascots and Ninja Turtles lore, Disney movies. Felt refreshing. Keep up the good work. I and, feel like that is the future. Is with Ninja we Turtles don't own and uh, serial mascots? Yes. Yeah, that's it. That's all media. It's going to be Ninja Turtles <laughs> it'll be, and serial It'll mascots. all be Wendell from Cinnamon Toast Crunch. <laughs> but, but it's going to be Ninja Turtles and, and serial mascots that we don't own. We're just going to have to stream them all. Oh, no. <laughs> but Baka Sensei had one more uh, post. Uh, this is for Old Man Stompy specifically, so we'll have to pass this one on. But thanks for the details on WrestleMania again, Old Man Stompy. I couldn't watch the whole event, but when Vice the Bulls said to wait for the second round for the return and conclusion on the event told by Old Man Stompy, I patiently wait for the next episode. It's unfortunately a bad start with the Hall of Fame. I hope they don't close the event again, because I feel what fans would be losing for the fault of, like, one jerk. As for the last fight of Ronda Rousey, it was a little cheap, but like you said, it was really late, so maybe it was the best you could say that maybe the referee was also tired. But thanks again for the content. And then one more post. It's a second post from uh, Dracologist. This is also referring to the WrestleMania because um, Old Man Stompy had referred to an older wrestling event, the Montreal Screwjob. And Dracologist just wanted to point out that that's actually the Montreal Screwjob is actually mentioned in Saints Row 3. That's freaking insane. <laughs> And yeah, and after the dog pile, that guy, like the guy who just got his ass beat for being an asshole, he just sounded god awful. Um, and also, as a joke, you could say Brock Lesnar has like an Achilles balls because remember that was his one weakness was kicking him in the balls because Brock Lesnar is otherwise fucking invincible. Uh, now, as for the fan question, this is something that's right up uh, our wheelhouse, I think. General Ledger asks: Are there any idioms of which you would like to know the meaning or origin? All of them, but I, I mean, I'm, that's like I, I, I actually have a book on a bunch of them because there's lots of times when I say things like that's an idiom, and I I realize that I'm saying it and I'm like, yeah, what does that why? actually mean? Where did this come from? It makes no, it doesn't seem to make any sense at all. But well, maybe we can enlighten each other. But I, I, I mean, I need to think of some. But still, <laughs> well, remember I, when I was like in in in, in college. Uh, Remember, I was like, "Who likes the cut of my jib?" Oh yeah, <laughs> what's a jib? And, that, and that, that one, that one guy in our class immediately was like, "I do," and you're like, "You're, you're the one." <laughs> so uh, a jib is. Um, I looked it up oh, <laughs> because hey. I was curious. Uh, a jib is uh, is a sail. Uh, so oh, who likes that, the that cut of my sail? Of it. Okay. Yeah. The one that I can think of that. Uh, so, my fiance and I got a dog recently, and we were walking. <laughs> And she was saying that her feet hurt, and I'm like, oh. Oh, I remember you brought this up when we were in Chinatown. Other than Tara, are your dogs barking? Yeah. And she's like, what, is, what does that mean? Because she's never heard it before. Yeah, yeah, and I'm yeah. like, oh, you've never heard the, the saying that means, like, your feet are tired? Yeah. She's like, no. And I'm like, now that I think about it, why the hell do they – Is it like, why is that the phrase? Does well, maybe, any, do either of you know? Well, I don't know, but if I, I, had, to, know. If I had to guess, if it works in that context, maybe it means you've been walking them for too long and they're tired, and they're like, stop it. But but why does it reference your feet? Because maybe they're tired from walking too much, so they're barking. So like now it applies to you if you've walked for too long. You're like, uh, well, it's, it's applying to me too. That That's my guess. I don't know. Because hmm. that's what, that's no what idioms are. They take a literal concept and they apply the attitude of it in a figurative way. You know what I always wondered? I mean, this isn't an idiom. Uh, this is more like a, um, uh, a like a, an origin of the word issue, you know? Yeah. Um, uh, but, uh, like, corn on the cop. Yeah, what, what is... What's a cop? It's on the cob. Like, they, they had that joke in Rick and Morty where they went to that one planet where everything was on the cob. <laughs> so weird. Yeah, but... but nothing else is on a cob nobody you you couldn't tell somebody what a cob is yeah it's um, just like, like it's, it's it's everything that's not the kernels but like why is it oh it's on the cob of course like that is weird corn is the only thing that has a cob yeah so so why are you specifically telling me about the cob that is kind of strange like, 
Yeah, yeah. I, I actually looked it up in Oxford English Dictionary. I, you know, I, uh, I because that's like the best source for that kind of thing. Yeah, it would be. And, um, uh, you know, etymology. Yeah. I, I, you know, what's the etymology? And um, they don't know either. Um, it's kind of like the uh, the phrase okay. Yeah. Um, nobody knows where it actually comes from. Um, the earliest in print um, instance of it is from uh, like a a letter that Andrew Jackson wrote and he wrote like okay in the in in the uh, in the margins actually you know about I, something it was like a footnote no I, I can think of two things that I don't know the answers for and they're, they're not really idioms one of them maybe but one of them I read about like on Twitter and I didn't even think about it until it was brought up at that time but you know how in the United States each state has a nickname like New Jersey is the Garden State. Uh, New York is the Empire State. Why? What does that mean? I mean, there's the Empire State Building, but it's named after the Empire State. Why is it called the Empire State? Or, uh, for that matter, Gotham. Why is it called Gotham? Because of Batman. Why is what called Yeah, because Gotham? of Batman. Got- yeah, like Just New York. In, in- or certain parts, of, certain parts of Manhattan are called Gotham. Oh, for real? All of, yeah. Yeah, Gotham is a, is another name for for New York. Oh, I had no idea. Yeah, it's so a nickname. So I was name. looking. So really quickly, I was looking up the the dogs are barking thing, and apparently it just comes back to a rhyme: dogs meet rhymes with feet, and they just coined it. But wow, that's oh, not that's that's a very British thing to do. It's um, Cockney. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's very British. Because yeah. like, because uh, you you saw Ocean's Eleven, right? Yeah. Remember that one part where yep. it's like, oh, if we yep. get caught, we're going to be in real Barney. Awkward silence. So, Barney rubble. Trouble. <laughs> that, that, that's what that is. So, but the interesting thing is, you know the brand of shoes Hush Puppies? Sure. Do you now know where they where they came, got that word from? That phrase? Because it quiets your barking dogs? Oh, uh, wow. That's clever. Now, now, why are like the things you eat called Hush Puppies? That's a better yeah. thing. Because they quiet, they make your feet hurt less. I don't know. Oh, by the way, (laughs) regarding Gotham, I have to wonder if it's not actually called Gotham. We just pronounce it that way today. It might have been like Gotham or something like that. Because there were a lot of British towns that were that had M at the end, like maybe for Hamlet or something. Like I remember in in a college class, there was was this one place called like Twickenham, and the. there was a poet who wrote about it who called it Twitnum because if you say it fast, it kind of just comes out that way. It becomes its own word. Like going to becomes gonna, and you just know what it means. It's like Boston, Massachusetts. Apparently, Boston. it was apparently it was Buttlestone, and if you say it fast enough, it's like <laughs> Buttlestone, like Boston. Forget it. Fuck it. Boston is fine. Oh, uh, by the way, the other idiom. So I don't know where Gotham comes from, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's like a shortened version of something. But as for um, the other idiom question mark that I'm not sure about. I remember this from when I was in high school. We were reading Romeo and Juliet, and it was one of those books, like the book version of the play, obviously, but it was one of those uh, books where you read every character's lines on the right page, and on the left page, it had all the footnotes if there was anything that needed to be explained. And there was one part where the nurse was getting really huffy about something, and she was like, who, who, who does this guy think I am? I'm not one of his skein's mates. And the footnote said, like, we have no idea what that means. And, like, and, like you can you could it's tell... It's like Yiddish cup. What the fuck does that yeah, mean? You can, you can, yeah, right. Like, you, you can tell by the attitude it's not good, but, like, literally, what does it mean? I don't know. <laughs> you and your Yiddish cup? What the fuck was that? Uh, it's from, like, a, an no, no, angry know, letter from, from the Albino Black Sheep. I, I know what it's from, but, like... What the fuck is that? <laughs> it's a from Yiddish a cup. Black let, let, let me ask my great grandparents. Maybe they'll know what a fucking Yiddish cup is. It's freaking ridiculous. Nobody knows. <laughs> <laughs> Not yeah, even so, your grandma. Yeah. Right. But yeah, those those are our. Uh, those are our <laughs> we could go that... all day about this. Yeah, this is could. kind I'm, of our I'm jam. Like, I'm like looking up a, a page full of idioms, yeah. of phrases that I that like. I'm looking at these and I'm like, oh, I use it all the time, but now I know it. No- I don't know what any of these mean now. Yeah, my, now my mom at it. some library book sale got me like a book of etymology and stuff like this. It's great. Oh, by the way, um, do, do any of you guys, because I, I did look this up. Do any of you guys know what hoisted by your own petard means? Oh, yeah, we, we've, we've gone over this. We have. Um, but uh, I'll let I'll let 
Pyro go go off on this one because I, I already know. I, it. I do not. Yeah, like a petard. I don't even know is, what a petard is. Yeah, a petard is like one of those old timey like grenades where it's like the stick and the cylinder. I think like like okay. a World War One grenade or something. Like I, I forgot what game it was, but there was a game where you select the like the grenade from your inventory and it actually calls it a petard. I was like, really? But if you're hoisted by your own petard, that means that you were caught in the explosion of your own thrown grenade. Like. You uh, threw it badly, or it bounced back at you, or something, and you're like, "Oh shit!" So, well, if Patrick Stewart's present, you're foisted on your own Picard. I don't get it at all. I I should have just played crickets right there. I I had my phone, yeah. and well, I should have just really quickly found crickets. But yeah, I so don't know how to play crickets. That's hoisted by your own Picard. Is like you done fucked up. <laughs> you gotta know how to. <laughs> you gotta know what a crumpet is to play cricket. You know to play cricket. Boy, did I not understand that when I was a kid. I don't know what a crumpet is. I guess I'm gonna be bad at cricket. <laughs> You don't know what a crumpet is, really? Well, when I was freaking like it's a dessert. nine years old, and I was watching the movie for the first time. Nine? Jeez. I don't, I don't know how fuck old <laughs> you, I was. You didn't know what a crumpet was? A nine? <laughs> Why would I? So now we're on. The I know what one was. Good for hey, you. Crumpets. I didn't know what a crumpet was, and I barely knew what a cricket was. Anyway, how about Cratchit? Cratchit. <laughs> yeah. What about Nurse Ratchet? Bob. All right. All right. <laughs> I think we're Let's out. move on. <laughs> Crickets. All right, come on. <laughs> Let's move on. So that takes care of the uh, the question and the responses. So thank you very much for your input, by the way, everybody. This is really yeah, yeah. For, for that was excellent. Very informative and entertaining uh, discussions. <laughs> Absolutely. Hopefully, okay, at so least this... it was entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> much much more rambling from us. Yes. Uh, so, uh, you, you had, um, one more, um, yeah, there were a uh, few things. how about a question? What? How about a question? Oh, a question from her. Oh, that was our that question. Was our I'm question. sorry. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Please. Uh, I, I wanted to give Pyro the opportunity since he hasn't been on for a little while to talk <laughs> about some topics that he's been wanting to talk about. So they, I've been wanting uh, to talk about them for the past week, meaning I wouldn't have talked about them before this week anyway. So <laughs> we, we, we realized that the topic we wanted to talk about would be a little bit long. So there were a few other pieces of news that came out this past week that I, I wanted to cover that I thought would be interesting to talk about. The first is, um, have either of you played Homestuck or know uh, what Homestuck I, is? I, 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 I didn't it's a comic know. book, isn't it? It was a webcomic where you could... It's like, a kind it of an interactive webcomic. Yeah, like you tell the creator, like he's like, do I open the door? Do I yeah. grab an item? And like a million people vote and then the creator uh, like makes the next comic based on the and popular he, vote. He kind of knew where he wanted to go with the story, but there were a lot of things he left up to what the uh, users um, typed in. But anyway, so I remember reading Homestuck when I was like interning like eight years ago, uh, I did not realize the series was still going on. So it ended three years ago, but just recently he added two more epilogues. Like this is a three year old thing. And he just decided, you know what? I have more story to tell. That's I know cool. the Homestuck fandom is like huge. You'll, if you ever see people at cons who are there, they spray paint In their gray skin face black. With orange horns yeah. Or whatever. That's yeah. from Homestuck. And I've always wanted to read it, um, but I've, I've it's never hilarious. gotten around to it. Like, is it? I've read the pre the one before Homestuck, which is about like this detective guy, and it's it, they're they're all interesting because they start off like pretty simple and pretty like not that special, and then like it gets weirder and weirder, and by the end you're like, what the hell is going on? There's so many weird lore things that have been created just because of what some person talked about on chapter like a hundred, let's say. I mean, they're long though, so I only recommend reading them if you have time, but. They're they're really funny. Um, the next thing I should check that out. Yeah, yeah. The next thing I wanted to talk about was uh, so GameStop. Um, I think oh. Dying Light, Dying Light is coming out soon, and GameStop is going to announce. No, it's like, day, Days Gone, I believe. Days Gone, yeah. Days Gone is coming out like this week, and GameStop. That's gonna be one of the first games that GameStop uses their new return policy for their guaranteed to love it return policy, which is. If you return the game in two days, in whether it's opened or unopened, you'll get the full amount back in store yeah. credit. So yes, that means you could play a game for two days, return it, get another game, and just keep doing that. I, I, I have to... 
I have to say there's going to be some sort of caveat because you like what's to stop someone from buying days got buying days gone, playing it for two days, returning it, getting a different game, returning that, and well, getting well, days well, gone again. Well, there there is a caveat already, and as far as I'm aware, games have to qualify for that promotion, and that's why mm. this that, that's why this announcement is so funny. I think the only game that does qualify right now is Days Gone, which actually. Oh makes me nervous about the quality of the game because like that's the one game they're like it's okay if you return it. so far that is but i think i remember that the other caveat is you can only use this within the first two days like you can only use this for games bought within the first two days of the release date so okay if i bought it at the end of the week i wouldn't be able to return it in two days so it's kind of giving people uh, a reason to try it out within the first two days and I think part of me feels like they're really hoping people will forget to return it. Well, probably. It's like, it's like <laughs> those online subscriptions where they auto-resubscribe you unless you manually tell the stuff. Yeah. Hmm. But it, it's it's funny, like, reading all these GameStop art, like articles in the past like year or so because you can tell they're kind of circling the drain. Yeah. But they're trying so hard to claw their way out. And it's just... it's. I- it's kind of like makes you not want to shop there. Jeez. It's not even. It's not even that. It like, and I. I'm, I don't want to say it makes me feel bad for GameStop because I, I, in no way, feel bad for GameStop. But it's kind of like watching an animal in like lots of pain dying, and it like doesn't. It knows it's gonna die soon, but it doesn't just want to give up. <laughs> like, I feel like we should just put GameStop out of its misery eventually. Not that the three of us or anyone who's listening. Can't yeah. do that ourselves, but still, it's it's hard because they are probably one of the easiest places to buy and sell used games. Yeah. But it's they're they're not doing well, and even their merger with, I feel like Think Geek must have been going through some crap to have decided to merge with GameStop because I don't think that was a good choice on their part. Because it did not help either of them out that much. I think. Yeah, honestly, yeah. Like, Think Geek has kind of cool stuff, but like. It is a bit frustrating to enter a GameStop and, like, a third to a half of the store just isn't GameStop stuff. It's just a bunch of Think Geek stuff. Well, that that's really what the store's turned into. Yeah, um, I, know, I know. I mean, and, and you can't really blame them. I mean, with, with the Xbox sad coming out. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a whole lot of... there's Yeah, like, anything that's digital only, like, the, 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 the people who work at the store won't know about it unless they happen to have just gotten it on their own because their, their store information wouldn't cover it why would it oh and isn't like playstation now uh gonna stop selling digital codes or there is a there is a company i don't don't know who is gonna stop selling digital codes in stores you can only buy digital games on their platform that does sound right because yeah you always could buy like a steam card or something or a nintendo eShop card uh like at gamestop i mean i think that's a different reason i think that's because they want to say like you know what like i don't want store x to have like money of ours yeah. in a way like to hold on to these codes for these games but if they can sell um like game like t- like a uh, amount like cards that are, like that are in a certain amount at our store then that guarantees that that's an, that that is the amount that someone's going to have at some time whereas games can change in price so yeah. it's it's interesting but anyway the, the last thing I wanted to talk about, which um, I, I looked into a little bit. I think it's just more cool to talk about, more so than I know a lot about them. But, uh, so I don't know if you two know, but in August, I believe it's August. I don't know, but it's, uh, coming up in uh, California and then in later in the year, near in the, in, in the summer in Florida, um, Disney is opening up new areas in their, I believe it's MGM Studio, Hollywood Studios, mm-hmm. which is uh, the Star Wars area, and they're really going like balls out, all to the wall, balls to the walls, all out in this park. So first of yeah. all, Coca Cola has released new <laughs> shape drinks oh. that are going to be written in whatever huh. the lang- the the written languages in the Star Star Wars universe. Oh, that's cool. Um, they're like spherical bottles. Oh, wait, uh, are, are they still gonna do the like 
your name on the bottle, but in the Star Wars language? I don't know, but all I know is that it's in the other in other language. Sure, uh, sure. So they're doing that. Um, there's a whole bunch of other things, but two of the things that I thought were really cool and are going to make me want to go to the Star Wars park and just spend money that I don't need to spend. So one is you can build your own droids. Yeah, that's pretty rad. Uh, and two is build your own lightsabers. Mm-hmm. So the first of all, for both of these uh, things, you can just buy like default things. So you can buy the hilt of Darth Vader's lightsaber and just buy a different blade for it. Um, and for the droids, you can just buy like C-3PO and some of the other like uh, I- iconic droids. Um, but in the droids ones, you can also buy uh, build your own BB-8 or R2-D2 by selecting different parts that you want and putting them together. And it is remote controlled. Oh, so it's nice. not just like a simple toy that you take three parts, put it together, cool, and I spent $10. This is going to be like a $100 thing probably. Because also you can uh, bu- uh, purchase personality chips for them. Oh, get out of here. There's, yeah. there's three personality tri- chips. One is Rebel, one is Imperial, and one is um, Bounty Hunter? Like, sca- like Scoundrel, basically. Okay. All right. Oh, cool. And based on the personality chip... Is one of them Nerf Herder? No. <laughs> Uh, uh, who's scruffy looking? <laughs> based on which personality chip you use, it'll interact with the park in different ways. So if oh, you have wow. a BB-8, but put a rebel um, personality chip in it, when you're in the um, the the rebel areas of the park, it'll be all happy. But then whenever you go to the imperial parts of the park, it'll be kind of afraid and scared. They, they really thought this ahead. That's amazing. Yeah, so that's really cool. That's cool. There's probably more that I'm forgetting, but I thought that was really cool. Um, and then the <clears throat> the next thing is the lightsabers. So, like I said, you can buy just iconic lightsabers if you want to, but also you can build your own, which I think is that this one is a, a, a lot cooler and more involved in the droids from what I've read. So when you pay the money to build your own lightsaber, you first pick one of, I think, four different packs. So there's power and control, which is basically like the Sith. Wow, this is intense. There's okay. uh, one that's like elemental, which is based off of, like the natural balance of the world. There's one that's defense and protection, which is some like mysterious faction that we don't know about yet. And then there's one that's based off of like the Jedi. Sure. Um, when you get this kit, it comes with a whole bunch of pieces that you're not going to use all of. Um, I mean, I think you could take them all home so you can change it when you want to. But then after you pick that kit, then the uh, person who works there who's obviously dressed up as um, someone who would work at a workshop in the Star Wars universe comes, comes with like three different or four different color cylinders that hold your crystal, your Kyber crystal. Oh, they're actually addressing the crystals. (laughs) That's great. And so what happens is they, they, you pick the color you want, but that doesn't tell you what shape or cut the crystal is. You only figure that out once you open it. Oh, geez. And you have to make your decision about the color before you can open it. So let's say you have a, a red, a green, a white, and a blue, and you say, like, all right, I want the blue one. So you open it, you get your crystal, and they have this thing you put the crystal in, and a hologram, I mean, I don't know how much of a hologram it is, because we don't have modern, we don't have futuristic hologram technology, but it's going to be a character from Star Wars, whether you know that person or not, explaining what oh, that crystal's, like, theme is. Is, is it going to be, and, like, the Princess Leia thing? Like, you're my only hope, that kind of hologram? Well, Maybe, but it's going to, I don't know, but it's going to talk about like what that crystal means, like what, like uh, <clears throat> a force user who uses this kind of cut and color, like what their personality is and those sorts of things. That is intense. And then from there, you build, based on the parts you got in the kit, you build your lightsaber and put the kyber crystal in. And then you can also choose a kind of blade you want that'll be, wow. be lit up by that. So it's like, it's super involved. This and is cool. It's really cool. And the other, the, the cool thing about it is, that little device you put the crystal in gives you a really short kind of introduction. So you can spend an extra $50 to buy that. So you can go at home and it give you, gives you more information about the crystal you got. And it's Unreal. like real. So, yeah. And the, what I thought was amazing was the lightsaber itself, like that whole pro the, the buying the kit, getting the crystal and going through the whole process of them explaining how to build it and everything is $150, which to me sounds pretty cheap for like what all this is you're getting. 
Well, so, assuming assuming the droid, you said the droid was a hundred bucks. I don't. The, they didn't put a price on that yet. I'm just okay, assuming it's gonna be hundred. I was gonna say if it's a hundred and the lightsaber is hundred fifty, then that's like a good deal for considering how much more is proportionally like offered. Especially but I'm just saying, because like the, the lightsaber stuff you could take home, but the droid, a lot of its features, from what you're saying, with the personality chip, are dependent right, on right. being in the park. Um, as far as we know, I don't think they announced everything for the droid, but like even so, even ignoring the droid and just thinking about the lightsaber, it's $150 for all that. I feel like that's a really good price for what you're getting. That's cool. But it, it definitely makes me want to go to that, that theme park. <laughs> that sounds cool, because wow. I, like, I knew that Disney was doing a Star Wars thing. Uh, I did not know about any of the details, though, so that's really fascinating. That's yeah, awesome. so that, that's what I wanted to mention. Like, I'm not, like, a huge Star Wars fan, but just all this stuff they're doing makes it really, really interesting to check out. That's cool anyway. And what's also interesting is, from what you're saying, I mean, with the droids, you could choose a particular character droid, but you could probably also build any droid you want. Uh, same goes with the lightsabers. You could have a Vader lightsaber. You can make whatever you want. It's also cool in that... I actually think this is a really clever idea. It's clearly Star Wars, but it's not tied to any of the movies specifically. It's just like, mm. you could imagine this being in the Star Wars universe, it's fine. It's like any of the Star Wars video games. It's just a thing that exists in the universe somewhere. Take it as you will. Like that, that I actually really appreciate that. Well, yeah, like the lightsabers, it's really just you going through building a lightsaber, where like the parts might reference things that you might see in the movies but you're making your own lightsaber yeah it's just it's just a lightsaber you're getting it from some shop like okay all right and for the droids like even though you're building a bb-8 or r2d2 those are just models of droids like you're choosing what color they are you're choosing what personality they have so it's still like your own personal droid like you exist in that universe which i think is really cool yeah Hmm. Just, just don't get that R5 droid. It'll blow out right as they're telling it to you. you <laughs> he did it R2-D2. on purpose so that C3PO and R2D2 could stay together. Hey, what are you trying to push on us? <laughs> he was noble. <laughs> what about that one? What about that blue one? <laughs> Uh, how about Gonk, the one that looks like a, uh, yeah, what, a gas what, what station? What purpose is that thing, sir? <laughs> it's, oh, fuck. It, it's, it's probably like a battery useless. with legs. <laughs> and it just says, it's like a Pokemon. Just gonk, gonk. <laughs> All right. Yeah. And there are so many video games, too, because they kind of stood out. But you're just like, what do you, why, why are you here? <laughs> um, that's, that's well, Pyro, I have. Did, uh, I... I I did want to uh, just add one more extra thing before we get going for the week. Um, I, I I left off something as well uh, for recon that I wanted to quickly talk about. Do you guys remember um, when Natsume, like out of the blue, out of freaking nowhere, uh, like remade Wild Guns? Yeah. And put that on PS4 and a bunch of other systems? Even physically, which was a bit of a surprise. Yeah, they came out with it physically on all those systems, even the Switch. Yeah. Um, and they added new features to it and made it even better than it already was, and it was already a fantastic game. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, they did. Uh, they are doing it again um, to, in, in a big surprise. So uh, apparently, the same game made um, this. The same uh, team. Um, made a game for the Super Nintendo that is also really rare and expensive called uh, Ninja Warriors, oh, um, which is a right. sequel. Yes, I have heard about this. Yeah, it's a sequel to a Taito game in uh, in the arcade that um, it, it, it was more of a, like a sequel. It was called Ninja Warriors again in Japan on the Super Famicom, but it was just called Ninja Warriors on uh on uh, America on, uh, in in the American release. But uh, this was the other. Um, arcade game other than Darius uh, that used a three screen long uh, widescreen. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, cool stuff. But anyway, that game is really awesome. The the yes. Super Famicom one. It's, it's, it's a really good beat 'em up. I remember yeah. one of the bosses. Its entrance is like it comes from the background. Like there's like a metal panel on the wall, and you just see a line go dangling across, and you just chainsaws through it, and just busts through, and just fights you you're like oh i'm not prepared for this so um they announced that they're coming out with a uh remake of that yeah that's really um, cool. I mean, yeah that game is probably like 200 dollars or something yeah no it's a really expensive more. it's a really expensive game and they're uh just like with uh wild guns they're improving it so they yeah. wild guns they added a 
two new playable characters yes. and made it up to four player um, simultaneous. Yeah. Now, uh, that game was two player simultaneous originally to begin with. Um, now, Ninja Warriors uh, for the Super Super Nintendo never had. Uh, a two-player mode that was only reserved for its predecessor, the the arcade version, um, and so that was one of the shortcomings of that game. You could you could pick one of two characters, and um, and and uh, you would need to take turns or whatever. Yeah. Um, this this version adds uh, two more playable characters and adds oh. a co-op mode. Well, that that means that there are five playable characters then. Because you had um... oh, it, it's four, it's four in total. I should say then. Okay, uh, I'm so I'm wrong. I'm pretty sure there were three. I think there were three characters. There's like the really big robot with nunchucks. There's yeah. like the robot who looks like a woman with a long blonde hair, and there's the like the insectoid looking one. Yeah, so it, it's gonna have five playable, ca- uh, four playable okay, so characters. Character, I'm sorry, but that's still really yeah. cool and co-op. Yeah, I, like honestly, the way that game is designed. Like, I don't know if it would have been able to handle co-op very well. Like, that one final fight level was removed because of slowdown. Like, I bet you Ninja Warriors would have had some severe slowdown if there were two players running and breaking stuff. But now, that'd be great to have. Oh, no, no. It's five. I'm sorry. I it keep... is five. It is five. I'm sorry. Damn, okay. Yeah, yeah. Two new characters. Nice. Um, so, uh, yeah. So, you were right. So, there, there is the... Uh, Konoichi, um, who is, uh, you know, a female ninja, yep. she she looks the most humanoid out of the bunch. Uh, hair. And, and there's a character called Ninja, um, which is just as original as Konoichi hey, is. B- by the way, um, one thing that's cool about Konoichi, <laughs> though, is if you don't know anything about the game, you're like, is she the human one? But as she takes damage, like, she feels yeah. more and more robot parts, and you're like, oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah, this guy's got, like, a big uh hulking like terminator looking dude yeah he's he's like dr zan from streets of rage 3 he'll just lift you and drop your ass with like one arm there's uh kamai uh kamai tachi kamai tachi who uh looks like a praying mantis almost um and then the two new characters are one that has a whip arm that's pretty sweet uh her name is yaksha uh-huh. Uh, and Raiden, uh, like a big, e- even bigger mech dude. <laughs> does he have, does he have like the drums on his back? Uh, I don't think he has drums, but. Maybe I'm thinking like Raijin, like maybe like the wind slash. Nah, he, he um, looks more almost like he's, he's like a, an exosuit almost. Yeah, to so, be bigger than the main ninja robot, that that's a big deal. The big ninja well, robot's just like the big burly guy. They, they put their weight um and oh, no. ninja ninja weighs 700 kilograms yeah uh the new guy Raiden, yeah. <laughs> weighs uh 32,000 kilograms <laughs> get the hell out of here <laughs> that's absurd <laughs> being like this <laughs> he's twice as tall as ninja is um what the hell yeah ninja's Does he like fit on huge the screen at all uh, and of course, they're making it widescreen, just like they did yeah, with uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, native widescreen, not just widescreen, but native widescreen, and nice. adding a bunch of levels too. So um, cool. it's going to be awesome. I mean, there, there's no doubt doubt yeah, about it. It's a great game. So um, another opportunity for a great uh, rare game to be released and improved upon. So yes. and isn't good the, shit. Isn't the new release? I think it actually is called Ninja Warrior again, even Western this time. The new one is called Ninja Warriors once again. <laughs> okay, that's fantastic. <laughs> Even a Genner. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, we should we should wrap up. Uh, we we've talked plenty, but uh, next week we plan on having another uh, normal episode. Um, we actually uh, have plans to uh, talk a little bit about uh, some Marvel video games in in celebration of uh, Endgame finally coming out this week. So. Uh, stay tuned for that, and uh, of course we'll have another uh, recon on Tuesday. So uh, uh, let's get our plugs out of the way here. Uh, that is the show for this week. We want to thank all of our fans who contributed questions. This was awesome, guys. I love doing a fan-focused episode. Uh, please keep us supplied with awesome topics by submitting your own questions via the YouTube and SoundCloud pages. While there, please give us thumbs-ups, likes, and five-star ratings on iTunes. And also, uh, be sure to ring the bell in 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 on YouTube. I went over that, um, you know, on on Recon. Um, it's not a trivial thing. Uh, I I know it sounds trite, but 
it, it really does help us out. It helps promote and spread awareness of the show, and any bit of encouragement helps keep the show going. Maybe I should do this slower so I don't fuck it up. <laughs> Son of a bitch. You can also catch us on Tuesday on for our sister podcast. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Reactive consciousness. <laughs> the in-depth look at this week, and I'm tired. I'm just imagining someone at home, like, slowly reaching over with the mouse and unclicking the bell <laughs> finally head, turning off the computer i'm thirty-two thousand kilograms <laughs> finally you can friend me as vice the bold on steam psm xbox live twitter battle.net and switch the <sighs> and you can follow me on my youtube channel lotus prince you can hit me up on twitter at at lotus prince and finally if you are interested in seeing my videos early getting in on exclusive live streams, selecting upcoming games for me to let's play, or finally getting involved in Discord discussions with me and other patrons, then perhaps consider swinging by my Patreon account, which can be found at patreon.com slash lotusprince. And you can find me <coughs> as cloudoid.ro <coughs> or Pyro Jack Frost on Xbox Live, PSN, Battle.net, Steam, Switch, probably other things too. And as it, and on in the as seen on TV section at Walgreens. Yes, yes, I am definitely there. Look for Pyro Jack Frost in the as seen on TV section. Like ch ch like, That's me. <laughs> ch 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 chia. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, we will uh, we will catch you again for another episode of Reactive. And uh, keep commenting, man. Uh, we 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 love everything you guys do. Thank you. Until next time, everyone. Goodbye.